Hey fellow world dwellers, it's Angry Tartu and in this video I want to answer the question that so many people is asking me. Why everyone is running with so high rats and so low health? What's the reason? And before we jump into the video, I have three new patrons that I want to welcome. It's Fatty Blunts, Mike Boom87, Mr. Dang ZG. Thank you a lot for joining Tartus Army and welcome guys. And now into the video. I will not be talking too much about theory and all the numbers and stuff I want to show you in practice. And as well, I don't want to tell anyone if he should go low health build or full health build. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to show what going low health actually meant. What's the practical meaning in game that causing 80% of players to go low health? And no, I'm not talking if it's balance, if it's not balance, if it should be nerfed or it should be left alone. It's not the point as well of this video, just to show how it works. Then basically my special is very high because as every bloody build, I'm wearing full set of unyielding armor. And first thing, if I go to the vendor, I can sell stuff like this Gatling laser for 50 caps. And that's the best value I can get it cannot go any higher than I'm capped already with just an yielding set. If I want to buy like Rikor Kickhard Circuit Board, I'm almost capped. The best price I can get on it, it's 1750. Then I'm almost there. And important, important to show you guys is that I'm not using hard bargain at this moment. I don't have it equipped. What's meant, I do not need to spend time and equip hard bargain when I need to trade with a vendor. I basically do not need a hard bargain to get the best possible prices. And if I will do the same but without bonuses from low health, what means without an yielding set, the same Gatling laser will sell for 35 caps and I'm losing 15 caps. That's a lot, that's much more trading to get 1400 caps out of a vendors. And I'm of course on my main, on my heavy gunnel and I'm not going to swap any perks, but I'm using at this moment uh, just a freshly crafted fixer without any modifications. That's how you craft at level 50 uh, for this demonstration. Uh, let's see if we kill a super mutant, how much experience I will get. Level 48 super mutant. And I'm getting 258 experience. I, I don't have any boost for experience. 258. And let's find another super mutant. Oh, there is another, but without an yielding set now. Okay, level 48. And 205. I just lost 50 experience from this skill. That's a lot or not? You tell me guys. For me it's a lot. I'm lost. I'm losing 50 experience by not using an yielding and not boosting my intelligence. It's not really really good an yielding, but it gives what every an yielding piece gives. Plus free to all special. Then, as you can see, my combat efficiency, even though I'm I'm not spec for this fixer, I can kill in VATS. I have like no issue of killing those super mutants in VATS. I can use my criticals. With a couple shots, I have a good hit chance. And as you can notice, I'm sneaking without any problem. Let's go and see on the inside. And if anyone missed that, my native agility is just five. Then that's definitely not a build for sneaking. But I'm sneaking and I'm fine. I can go around, I'm hidden, sometimes I'm in caution, but it's still fine. I can shoot the super mutant, couple headshots, he's down. He, he has no idea what, what's happening. He cannot detect me. And another one down. I'm not detected. Yeah, they don't know what hit them. 
And I can use vats a lot. Now the same thing, but we'll heal up our rats. Okay, now all that change. I healed my rats. I'm full health now. And I need to shoot much more. As you notice, I already ran out of AP. I cannot. I don't have enough AP to kill a single super mutant. And I'm barely doing any damage without vats. I cannot do headshots. I'm struggling. I didn't change the weapon. I didn't change the build. I didn't change the armor. I did nothing. And I'm in danger. All I did is I healed my rats. And I healed my health. And look at my efficiency in combat. I'm in danger. I'm not getting those sneak attacks. I tried to lose him. Put me back in caution. You cannot even lose this guy. Okay, I'm back in caution. And back in danger, he spot me straight away. Do you see the difference? It's not a bloodied weapon. So a lot of people think that bloodied build is a bloodied weapon. And this is what giving power. This is like almost nothing to do with a bloodied weapon. Bloodied weapon is a nice bonus on top of everything. Like icing on the cake. It's not what make bloodied build strong. Even with criticals, I'm out of AP again. Okay, let's let's try to run away and let's try to drop my health and and see what happened again. Okay, I am back with a low health. Everything exactly the same. All that change, I drop my health again. Let's see how I will be doing. Just to make sure this test is correct. Same weapon, same build, everything the same. Let's sneak around and find some super mutants. Where is he? Oh, there is behind me. Even without the headshots, like... You see the difference in damage numbers. And in the experience I'm getting. Amount of bullets I'm using to actually kill those super mutants. Effectiveness of my sneak. Damage with VATS criticals and how often I have VATS criticals. The fact that I'm not running out of my AP, my AP is just fine. Even though I heal up and I cannot kill a single super mutant with my AP pool. But I drop my health and that is all I need to do. There is like, it's nothing really complicated. It's not like a bloodied approach require you to get some special build, very complicated approach or preparation. All you need is an yielding set of armor. That's basically it. That's a secret and couple perks that synergize very well. Yeah, let's take a look on those perks. The three most important perks for the low health approach. We have Radical, just one point under endurance you will get five strength thanks to your rats that's amazing for melee build but not only even if you are not a melee build it's 25 carry weight for just one point that's a good deal next nerd rage extra resistance extra ap regen and more damage just because your health is low next serendipity if your health is low you have almost 50% chance to avoid damage. Whatever damage will hit you will most likely not hit you at all. Then those three perks and one mutation, one mutation, adrenaline reaction. When my health is low and I'm on a team at this moment with strange in numbers perk, then my damage goes up by over 60%. Just because my health is low, regardless of weapon I'm using. And suddenly, to summarize it, suddenly I can sneak. I have a lot of AP. I have damage. I can even sprint longer. I can stay hidden, no problem. I can take any weapon and kill mobs. I will save ammo. And about experience. Why is it important? It used to be totally like... Just a gimmick. Yo level, like yo level, I'm level 455. That used to be just a gimmick. You could compete with others who has a higher level. It was doing nothing. It was totally meaningless. But now, experience at your level 
you are unlocking pair cards that you will need very soon to get your legendary perks. Then you will get more legendary perks than someone who's using full health build. And that's not everything. If you are struggling with a season pass, the legendary run, look at the challenges. It's second week. The main repeatable way to gain the score is to gain experience. And how you gain more experience? By boosting your intelligence and by killing enemies faster. You get both of those by going low health. And if you don't have enough time to farm experience and you play full health, what you will need to do? You will need to spend atoms to unlock another ranks. Then that's definitely a worse option for most people. Like, not everyone wants to spend money and atoms for legendary run, even if, like, someone have only time to play during the weekend. Then going low health build helps those people a lot. Hopefully this short video will be helpful for some of you, especially for the new players. And I'm working on nuclear winter build. That's, that's my plan to upload. Unfortunately, it's not finished yet. I wanted to upload it today, but it's not finished yet. Then I'm uploading this one instead. And I will keep working on nuclear winter build. And I will upload it as soon as it will be done. I will be probably doing two different nuclear winter builds. Then you will be able to choose from whatever suits you best. And why I'm doing that? Yeah, there is definitely way less cheaters on PC, what actually allows me to test those builds and play a little bit in Nuclear Winter, what was like almost impossible before. And I'm happy about that. I have nothing against Nuclear Winter when it's working as intended, because some people think that I hate Nuclear Winter. No, I hate the experience when you have cheaters running everywhere. But if there is no cheaters, I'm fine with Nuclear Winter. Although I still play mostly on adventure. I like adventure more. But it doesn't mean that I do not like Nuclear Winter. And as always, thank you a lot for watching. And see you guys in the next one.